Well, folks, remember that time that Taylor Swift was just a singer who really needed an auto-tune? Well, now Taylor Swift is a civil rights hero. You know, Taylor Swift, her silence was deafening. You remember that time that Taylor Swift used to just be like a person who sang songs and uh, without auto-tune didn't sound amazing? Well, now she has decided that she's a political leader of sorts. So she, uh, she was doing a concert in Chicago and she took a month. She took a moment to celebrate Pride Month because this is requisite. And then she made a political speech, the senator from Illinois here. is getting to be with you and watching you interact with each other, being so loving and so thoughtful and so caring. And so being with you during Pride Month, getting to getting to sing the words to you need to calm down where there are lyrics like, can you just not step on his gown? Or shade never made it in this game. And you guys are screaming those lyrics. In such solidarity, in such support of one another, encouraging beautiful acceptance and peace and safety and i wish that every place was safe and beautiful for people in the LGBT community I really wish that. Right. So the, notice that notice the language here. The language that's pitched to the public is we just want to be safe. We just want to be left alone. That's not that that's not what's happening. Have you noticed that's what's happening in society? They literally lit up the Department of Agriculture with gay pride flag. Does that sound like a safe space, or does that sound like an actual religious movement that is seeking to substitute one set of morals for another? That's seeking to supplement, that's seeking to supplant truth about human relations and about progeneration and about the decency of certain sexual activity or the utilitarianism of certain sexual activity, if you wish to remove morality from the equation, and replace that with subjectivist pride. Right? It is truth versus pride. That, that is what this is about, which is why it's so necessary for the left to Make sure that the truth is never spoken because if the truth is spoken, it's considered insulting and bad. It's why things can't be said because if you speak out against the religious, the new religious norm of the secular left, if you speak out against that norm, it's blasphemy and blasphemy must be stopped. It must be stopped because if you speak the truth, you might explode what exactly is going on. It's why they're trying to stop what is a woman. It's why they're constantly attempting to boycott out of existence anybody who says the reality about human relations. It's... These are things that cannot be said. These are, these are things that you're just not supposed to say. And if you do say them, then the secular tsunami comes for you. When you are running a business, your employees can create all sorts of very interesting, fascinating situations. Hey, the fact of the matter is that when you have 300 odd employees like you have here at, at Daily Wire, every so often somebody is going to create an HR problem for you. And this creates serious legal liability, which is why we have an entire HR department here at Daily Wire. But you may not have an HR department where you work because you're a startup company or you're a small business. Well, this could be a problem for you. This is why you need Bambi. Bambi gives you access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just 99 bucks per month. This person is available to you by phone, email, and real-time chat. They'll help you run employee onboardings, terminations, and performance reviews. With Bambi's HR Autopilot feature, you can automate important HR practices like setting policies, employee training, and feedback procedures. All of Bambi's HR managers are based in the United States and can support the nuances across all 50 states. HR managers can easily cost $80,000 per year, but Bambi starts at just 99 bucks per month. Schedule your free conversation today. See how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type Ben Shapiro under podcast when you sign up. Spell B-A-M-B-E-E.com. That's Bambi.com and type in Ben Shapiro. This Father's Day, let dad unleash his inner grill master. Whether he prefers that sizzling steak or savory grilled chicken, look no further than the gift of meat from our friends over at Good Ranchers. Producer Savvy and her husband, first time dad, they just got the Ranchers Classic Box. They are loving it. We all know what life is like with a new baby. I know that particularly right now. It is um, wonderful and yet extraordinarily tiring. You don't need to worry about going to the grocery store and buying meat from you know God knows where. So Savvy and her husband are enjoying the magic of Good Ranchers. Good Ranchers offers ribeyes, New York strips, T-bones, all natural burgers, and all the most delicious chicken you could ever want. Plus, right now you'll get 30 bucks off with our code Ben at GoodRanchers.com. Good Ranchers also offers a price lock guarantee for the next two years. Imagine if you could have locked in your price two years ago, you would have saved hundreds of dollars. If you're not sure how to grill the perfect steak, good news. Well, Good Ranchers has tons of recipes on their website, like our favorite, how to cook a steak better than Gordon Ramsay. Whether dad is a steak lover, a barbecue enthusiast, or just enjoys that good old-fashioned burger, Good Ranchers has something for everybody. So order today. Make this Father's Day a sizzling success. Head on over to GoodRanchers.com. Use our code BEN for 30 bucks off any box. That's promo code BEN at GoodRanchers.com. GoodRanchers.com is American meat delivered. Okay, meanwhile, speaking of the battle between truth and wokeness, and pride, of course, is just one aspect of the woke mind virus, which suggests that how you would wish reality to be ought to supplant what actually is, right? Truth has to be discarded in favor of stupid utopianism. Well, this is now what is happening 
in Chicago at Walgreens. This is an unbelievable thing. So apparently, Walgreens has been experiencing so much theft in Chicago that they have now locked up the entire store, like the entirety of the store. There are two aisles in the entire Walgreens where customers can shop for themselves. The rest is locked up and you need to order from a kiosk because too many people are just, the the, the rates of breakage, as they call it in the industry, are just too high. People are running in and they are robbing the store so often that Walgreens had two choices. Either they shut down the store entirely or they literally lock everything. They lock down the aisles. And then in order for you to order, you can like go to a kiosk and order everything. According to the UK Daily Mail, a Chicago branch of Walgreens has been redesigned with just two aisles where customers may shop for themselves. The rest must be done via a kiosk. The new anti-theft store at 2 East Roosevelt in downtown Chicago will trust shoppers to pick up essentials for themselves in the two free aisles. Everything else must be ordered and picked up via a counter. The store took weeks to construct and it opened to mixed reviews on Tuesday. One shopper told WBBM News Radio their experience was positive. Quote, it's nice that for the essentials, you no longer have to call security to get them to open the glass case. So I guess that the, the default before that is that even for the essentials, you had to ask somebody to unlock. It's been a long time thing that when you go to a grocery store, there are certain items that are probably high theft items like razors, for example, where you actually have to have the store employees unlock it for you. You go to the local CVS and there's the stuff they keep behind the counter because that stuff was like very high rates of stealing. In Chicago, apparently that's just all the things. That's like everything in the store. We should be able to be trusted to go in without having to have cameras and people watching us and all that stuff, said one person. Well, I mean, if people weren't stealing everything, probably that'd be that'd probably be better. The move comes after Walgreens chief financial officer told investors on an earnings call this year, executives may have overstated the effects of organized shoplifting. So maybe we cried too much last year. He said that the company had probably mischaracterized how much theft took place in the chain's stores and may have spent too much introducing security measures. Well, or alternatively, you guys don't have the actual stones to go up against municipal governments that have failed to arrest criminals. When I say truth versus wokeness, this would be the example. And we live in a society in which high rates of criminality if they happen to be con- congregated in particular racial sectors of the population, have to be ignored. So instead of saying, say, a disproportionate number of people who are shoplifting in downtown Chicago are black, but that has nothing to do with them being black. It has to do with you need to arrest people who are shoplifting. Instead of just saying that, they're like, oh, oh it means too many black people are being arrested. If we ask for people to be arrested, we're going to look like racists. And that means that the best possible solution is we lock up the entire store. Our solution is not to stump for criminals to go to jail, which, by the way, would make life better for all of the non-criminals in Chicago, including mainly, by the way, people living in low-income communities that are disproportionately minority. Now, instead, what we're going to do is we'll make everybody suffer so we can continue along with the myth that if a disproportionate number of black men are going to prison, it's because America is racist rather than a disproportionate number of black men are committing certain types of crime. It's not just Walgreens, of course. Every element of our media and our corporate Our corporate infrastructure has been suffused with this stupidity. Instead of looking at individuals in America and their performance and then deciding whether or not they hit the metrics, we have decided that if the metrics are disproportionately hit by certain groups but not hit by other groups, that must be some reflection of underlying racial animus. That's how you end up with this story in the New York Times about Stuyvesant High School. Quote, Stuyvesant High School admitted 762 new students. Only seven are black. Okay, so just from that headline, it makes it sound like the the people who are leading Stuyvesant are just, they must be the worst racists ever. I mean, 762 new students and only seven are black. Do they hate black people or something? Well, no, they don't actually select the people who enter Stuyvesant. There's an entry exam. The people who pass the entry exam get in. The people who don't, don't. They're not equally apportioned by race. The numbers, which have remained stubbornly low for years, says the New York Times, place a fresh spotlight on racial and ethnic disparities in the nation's largest school system. Now, again, a disparity does not mean discrimination. It might just be a disparity. There's a disparity between the the percentage of men and the percentage of women who go to prison. Is that discrimination? Is it because society hates men that 95% of the people in prisons are men? Or is that called a disparity? At Stuyvesant High Schools in Manhattan, the most selective of the city's so-called specialized schools, seven of the 762 offers made went to black students, down from 11 last year and eight in 2021. 20 Latino students were offered spots at Stuyvesant. So obviously, this is white supremacy, right? Except that only 158 of those slots went to uh, white students. 489 went to Asian students. Obviously, New York is just a wildly pro-Asian, anti-white, anti-Latino, anti-black place. Clearly, that's what's happening here. The Asians have gotten control of the levers of power in in New York, which is why Andrew Yang is currently the mayor. I I can't believe it. I can't believe that I can't believe the Asian supremacy that is happening in Stuyvesant. Or maybe there are some differences in how Asian students study. 
and family and parental structure and the kind of time they spend on homework. Maybe it would be those things. But no, instead, we are going to yell at Stoy in High School. You remember that Mayor Bill de Blasio, actually, because he wanted to reject reality so much, he actually proposed replacing the entire entrance exam, which would have raised the share of black and Latino students accepted to more than 40 percent. That would have involved, of course, just exploding all of the standards in the first place. And this has now suffused so much of what's happening across our society. According to the Wall Street Journal, assaults in school have ratcheted up since, in, since the return to in-person learning, adding to broader concerns about safety in school. Across the United States, violence against teachers has ratcheted up since the widespread return to in-person learning in 2021. In some areas, the problem is worse than it was pre-pandemic. The data are limited because many states don't specifically track teacher assaults or use the same methodology to make data comparable. From September through May of the current school year, the number of assault-related workers' comp claims filed at some 2,000 schools in different regions of the United States topped 1,350, a five-year high. So that means at least 1,350 workers across the United States, have been mainly teachers, you'd imagine, at these schools, have experienced assault. The average cost of those claims has increased 26% percent to around $6,700 compared with the same period in 2018-2019. So why exactly is um, all of that happening? Well, one of the reasons is because schools have stopped expelling or suspending students who assault people or sending them to jail. In a nationwide American Psychological Association survey of nearly 15,000 teachers and staff from July 2020 to June 2021, 14% of teachers reported physical violence from students. 49% of teachers said they wanted to quit or switch schools. While teachers are frequently hurt intervening in fights, some are targeted. Now, here's, here's, where, here's where things get fun. Okay, why exactly is all of this happening? Why this vast uptick in the amount of violence against teachers? Well, th the reason is because everyone is afraid of sending kids to the school-to-prison pipeline. The so-called school-to-prison pipeline, right? There's been a big bugaboo of the left for a long time is the idea that if you put law enforcement officers in schools, if you put support officers in schools to prevent this sort of stuff, they might arrest kids and those kids might end up in jail. And we can't have that. So just like Walgreens, what we'll do is we'll pretend that the problem isn't happening. All righty, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be joined by Bjorn Lomborg, who, of course, is the debunker of all global warming hysteria. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.